Jessica is walking down a cold street in an abandoned city. The temperature is so low that steam is coming out of her mouth. She turns the corner and notices a cart filled with food and bottles of water. It's a real treasure, especially in a world where the entire civilization is almost completely destroyed. But as soon as the girl touches the cart, three zombies come out of the building. They're approaching Jessica, stretching out their hands toward her. She grabs the cart and runs away, but then she stops. She understands that they are not zombies, but people. How has she figured it out? All these zombies have steam coming out of their mouths. That means they're breathing and they're alive. One famous movie studio hires new staff lighting and sound engineers, a director of photography, a mechanic, a gaffer, prop artist, stunt performers, and an editor. But they all need to demonstrate their professional skills to get this job. The candidates have a week to make a short movie. On Monday, they start. Actors and actresses laugh and cry, sound engineers record all their emotions, the DOP captures beautiful pictures, stunt performers are amazing. Prop artists create a small town with incredible decorations. One week later, the studio managers are watching the movie. It's terrible. None of the candidates gets the job. Why did this happen? Why couldn't they make a good movie? There was no director among them and no screenwriter to write a script. Two friends are sitting at the same table in a cafe. One of them is speaking about the extinction of dinosaurs. He's saying scientists are going to get the genetic code of these ancient creatures. The second friend is talking about his sister's party. There were a lot of cool people, great music, and delicious food. Other people sitting in the cafe are annoyed by the guy's loud voices. But why is this dialogue so strange? Why is one of the guys talking about dinosaurs and the other is telling him about a party. What's going on here? These two guys aren't speaking to each other. They're talking on their phones through headphones. It's nighttime. Three girls are standing in line at an ATM inside a bank. The first girl is getting some banknotes. The second one is looking around. The third girl is typing on her phone. Which one is a thief? Well, they're all robbers. The bank is closed. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says open. So the closed side is turned toward the street. Where's my cake? The chef screams. Assistants and junior cooks are running around the kitchen. A steak is burning on a frying pan. The kitchen is filled with smoke. A plate falls to the floor and shatters. The chef screams again, Where's my cake? Who took it? Everyone says they've been cooking. None of them wants to admit eating the cake. The chef doesn't believe them. Who do you think stole the cake? Nobody. The cake is in the oven, see? Jack is in a cold cell. There's only bare ground under his feet. In the cell, there's one window, but it's impossible to escape through because it's located too high. There are no stairs and no chairs, just a shovel. Jack has no water and no food. He needs to get out of there in two days. But he can't dig a tunnel since the walls are too thick and go deep underground. Jack will get exhausted long before he digs his way to freedom. So, how can he escape? He needs to dig a large hole in the ground and use the dirt to make a small hill. He can then climb it and reach the window. Marty walks around an IT university building. Three people are following him and discussing something. Marty enters the Hall of Holograms. People walk inside, too. Marty sits down on a chair. As for the three people, they go on the stage, still talking. 
Some of them are holograms. But who? This guy has a flashing nail on his right index finger. This girl has two left hands. The girl in the middle is slightly transparent. They all seem to be holograms. But wait a minute. Take a look at Marty. He's sitting on a chair, but his body isn't touching the surface of the seat. He's not real either. It's early morning. Sam leaves the house and goes to the lake. The sun hasn't risen yet. The water is crystal clear. Frogs are croaking in the distance. Sam takes several photos of nature and one selfie. He posts the pictures and writes this caption. I've had a great run. There is nothing better than a morning workout, my dear followers. Have a great day. After that, the guy returns home and goes back to bed. He sleeps until lunch and then takes his phone and sees hundreds of comments. <laughs> I wish I had such a run. Dude, why do you deceive us like that? Here it is, a real day of the champion. Obviously, people have found out that Sam didn't run in the morning. But how? He wrote that he had just had a run, but his face isn't red and he isn't sweaty at all. There are four different countries on one distant continent. Each of these countries has its own emblem with one simple symbol. The same number of people live in each of the countries – nine ordinary citizens and one monster. One queen, one king, and one prince. Two jesters sometimes drop by these kingdoms. What is this continent? It's a deck of cards. It contains nine regular cards – Ace, Queen, King, Jack, and Joker. Once on a cold winter evening, someone broke into a bakery. When the baker came to the building in the morning, he noticed that the lock was broken. He called the police and reported a break-in. Then he went inside and realized that the thief hadn't stolen anything. At that moment, the police arrived. The baker told him that the place hadn't been robbed. But a police officer inspected the room and declared that someone had still broken the law. What happened there? There are almost imperceptible footprints leading to the pantry. The thief must have hidden there to wait for the baker to receive the day's earnings. Mickey has been wandering in a desert for several hours. He's tired, thirsty, hungry, and sleepy. He notices a big house standing on the hot sand. Mickey goes inside and sees a massive block of ice in the center. Someone must have put it there for a reason. Mickey licks the ice, but it doesn't quench his thirst. He decides to wait. It takes a couple of seconds for one drop of water to evaporate in the desert, so the ice should melt soon. The guy leaves the building and goes for a walk. Several hours later, he returns to the house, but nothing has changed. The ice hasn't melted. How is this possible? There are air conditioners on the ceiling. They keep the temperature in the room low and prevent the ice from melting. Florence, Anya, and Margot are walking along the beach, telling one another about the past week. All the girls look wealthy and successful, but several people are taking photos of them. It means that at least one of these girls is a celebrity. But who? It's Anya. Look! That guy is wearing a t-shirt with her face on it. Marcus is leaving a large shopping mall. He pulls his phone out of the pocket and accidentally drops it. Oh no, the screen is cracked. Marcus gets into a taxi and goes to a phone repair service. He sees dozens of shops. Each of them offers its own services. Battery replacement. The best service in the city. Let's fix your microphone. And dozens of others. Help Marcus choose where to go.
Do you see a small store with the We Can Change the Screen Glass sign? This is what Marcus needs. Somewhere at sea, a huge ship is traveling. People on the deck are having fun, speaking, drinking cocktails, eating delicious food, enjoying beautiful seascapes. This is a passenger liner. It doesn't have any secret mission. The passengers are ordinary people with ordinary jobs. They discuss the weather, new theater plays, music, books, and travel destinations. They all seem to be intelligent and educated. The strange thing is that no one takes any photos and posts them on the internet. Okay, the internet may not be working so far from the shore, but why don't they take selfies? Who said this cruise was taking place nowadays? It happened before the era of smartphones and the internet. A young guy is sitting on hot sand somewhere in the desert. There are several boxes, cans, sandbags, and water bottles around him. The guy looks up. He sees a giant balloon flying further and further away. There are two people in the gondola. They're waving and wishing him luck. A broken match lies on the guy's palm. What do you think happened here? Three people were flying in a hot air balloon over a desert. At some point, they began to run out of fuel. To prolong the flight, they decided to drop their cargo. Then they realized it was also necessary to get rid of one person. This way, the balloon's weight would decrease and it would consume less fuel. The travelers decided to cast lots. Whoever got a broken match would have to stay in the desert. This guy lost. Ironically, his name is Sandy. Ah, don't worry, he gets rescued in about an hour by a limousine from the Burj Khalifa Hotel in Dubai. He'll be in luxury, while the other two people are stuck in a hot air balloon over the desert. <laughs> Who's the loser now? Selma is a witch. One day, she returns home and finds out that the most powerful magic book from her library is missing. The thief left a note with the following letters. Can you guess what this message means? Selma should read this book from left to right. This way, the message reads like, Your book is in a swamp cabin. Come at midnight and pick it up. Salma calls her sister Alma, and they go to the swamp cabin together. The house is empty, so they decide to explore the attic. Salma finds a dusty book and reads a couple of words out loud. Suddenly, Alma turns into a frog. Thankfully, every spell in this book has a canceling potion. But unfortunately, some parts of this book are written in weird language. Only one of these three potions will help. The trick is to find a recipe that contains the maximum number of words similar to the text on the left. Can you help Salma? Take a look at the first recipe. It has two matching words. The second recipe has four matches. And the third one has just one, so the guys need to use the second potion. Thankfully, Alma turns back into a human. The sisters keep on exploring the cabin. Can you spot which emoji is absent in this location? This one! What about this room? Can you sort the adjacent emoji out? The fourth emoji doesn't belong here. Suddenly, a wicked wizard arrives at the cabin and says, Hello, Salma. I'm ready to return your book if you manage to solve my riddle. When do we see two, but call ten instead?
When we look at the clock and see the number two, we say 10 minutes. The wicked wizard returns the book to Salma and says, There are three ways out of the swamp, but only one of them is safe. There are venomous spiders crawling around the first route. A couple of werewolves are hanging out on the second route. And the third route is full of magic traps hidden in unknown places. Good luck! Which way is more or less safe? Salma and Alma should choose the second route. Take a look at the sky. It's a new moon, so the werewolves are not dangerous. The next day, Salma goes to the magic school. She meets a new student, Sebastian, and falls in love at first sight. Salma gets so nervous in his company that she can't even talk. She decides to put a love note into his backpack. Now her task is to remember which backpack belongs to Sebastian. Here is what she remembers for sure. If it's red, it doesn't have any buttons. If it's blue, it doesn't have a handle. Also, it's not standing next to the last backpack in line. Can you help Salma find Sebastian's backpack? We can exclude these red backpacks because they have buttons. Also, we can get rid of the blue backpack with a handle. And now, all we need to do is to sort out this backpack standing next to the last one in line. And voila! Sebastian's backpack is over here! Later that day, Sebastian finds Salma's note. But her message is encoded. Can you help him figure out the hidden meaning? Too good for me. Meanwhile, Salma returns from school and goes to take a bubble bath. Can you spot what's wrong in this bathroom? Take a closer look at her bathtub. There's a shark fin sticking out of the water. It's vacation time! Selma goes hiking in the woods, while Alma is having a barbecue party in the mountains. One of the sisters is in danger. Can you guess who just by looking at their pictures? Although Alma's tent is dirty and old, it's still pretty useful. Meanwhile, Alma is making a barbecue right next to a jar of gasoline, so she's in more danger. It starts raining. Selma decides to leave the forest and check into the local hotel. The manager says, um, Welcome, we only have four empty rooms left. You can check them out and choose. Can you help Selma make the best choice? The window in the first room is not safe. There are cracks in the glass. Something alive is moving under the bed sheets in the third room. And the fourth room has a haunted mirror. So, Salma should choose the second room. Salma walks around the hotel and comes across a spooky wedding ceremony. One of these people is a werewolf. Can you guess who? It's the groom. Take a closer look at his outfit. It's hiding a wolf tail. The hotel security gets an emergency alert. There's a woman with fake documents among the hotel guests. The guard finds three suspects. Can you spot whose passport is fake? No matter what person a country is from, no passport can have a photo with a sunny beach in the background. They should be solid, so Karen's documents are fake. 
Salma goes to the spa area of the hotel. Can you spot who's not from this planet? These two ladies seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on this lady's arm. It's unlikely that a human being would choose to go to a sauna if they had cuts or scratches. Someone broke an old cursed statue in the local museum. Anyone who comes into contact with the fragments of the statue gets a green rash. The manager invites Selma to investigate this mysterious case. She finds four suspects and questions them. Drake says, Lady, I didn't even see the sculpture. I only came here to use the toilet. Morgana says, I wanted to see this particular piece, but unfortunately, I arrived here too late. I didn't know about the curse, so I touched the fragments. Fiona says, I didn't break the statue, but I stole one fragment to sell it. Then I noticed a rash and I threw it away. Xavier says, I read about the curse, so I prefer to stay away from this artifact. Who's lying? It's okay for Morgana and Fiona to have a rash. They both touched the cursed sculpture. But why did Drake get a rash? Salma goes to a magic store to purchase some ingredients for her rituals. The sales lady offers a 50% discount if Salma cracks her riddle. I never was there. I'm always to be. You have never ever seen me, nor ever you will. Yet I am the confidence of everyone. Who am I? The correct answer is future. Salma invites a couple of friends for dinner. Someone suggests playing cards, but for some reason, Salma is facing bad luck all night. Can you guess why she's losing? There's a mirror behind Salma. The other players can see her cards. After the party, Salma notices that her antique gold candlesticks are missing. She visits four suspects at their homes and questions them. Lily says, I was very tired after the party, so I took a taxi and went home. You can ask the driver. My hands were empty. Bella says, I didn't steal your stuff, Salma. Everyone knows that I'm richer than you. Alma says, Come on, you're my sister. I know how much those candlesticks mean to you. And Sebastian says, Honestly, I didn't pay any attention to your things. I was looking at you all night. Who's the thief? Bella's dog is digging the ground in her backyard. Take a closer look and you'll notice Salma's candlestick sticking out of the ground. Busted! Matt buys a new house. In the basement, he discovers three signed boxes and a note. It says that one of the boxes contains one million dollars. The two other boxes are empty according to the note. Only one of the three messages uh -oh. written on the boxes is true. On the first box, it's said that the cash is not there. The second box has a similar message, the cash is not here. And the third box says that the cash is in the second box. If you were Matt, which bag would you choose? Matt should choose the first bag as we know only one of the clues is true. So the money should be in the first bag. Matt walks out of his house and goes to the garden. He pulls out his right hand. Suddenly, a bee lands on it. What's in Matt's uh -oh. eye? Beauty, why? because beauty is in the eye of the bee holder. 
In the garden, Matt takes two pictures. Can you spot three differences between them? Here they are. Matt returns home and figures uh -oh. out that someone has broken into his house and the thief has just left. How did Matt figure this out? Someone turned on his electric stove and put a plastic bag on top. The plastic is only half melted, so the thief must have left a few seconds ago. Matt goes to his favorite vegan restaurant as usual on Fridays. He orders a slice of pizza, puts it on a table, and leaves for a couple of minutes to wash his hands. Then Matt comes back and finds out uh -oh. that his pizza is gone. He interrogates three customers nearby. Harold says, I'm not hungry, so I didn't even look at your food. I came here for the sake of coffee. Bella says, I was having a video call with my boyfriend. He lives in another country, so we go on virtual dates every Sunday. Distance is so exhausting. And Anna says, I was taking pictures of my food, so I didn't look around. You can check them out if you don't believe me. After hearing about what they had to say, Matt knows for sure who's a liar. What about you? According to Bella, she goes uh -oh. on virtual dates every Sunday. But it's Friday. Liar! Matt's girlfriend Erica is visiting him in his lab. Suddenly, she faces two uh -oh. identical Matts. Can you help her figure out who's a clone? The guy on the right has a scar on his arm. Meanwhile, the clone doesn't have any because his skin is brand new. Matt goes to the mall and buys a bat and a ball for $1.10 in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Nope, the correct answer is not 10 cents. It's actually a little less. A ball costs 5 cents and the bat $1.05. And together they total $1.10. Someone robbed Matt's lab. The thief stole the cloning device and he's going to hand it over tonight. This is a great opportunity to catch the criminal. The police figure out the approximate place where to look for the device. They decide to question several people nearby. Greg says, the garbage truck has just emptied the overhead trash cans. Jeff says, I'm in charge of these trash cans. I checked all the cans next to the yellow ones and found nothing interesting. And Bill just points at all the trash cans that someone approached today. Can you help uh -oh. the police find the trash can with the stolen device? First of all, we need to calculate the top cans. And now let's check all the remaining trash cans which people were approaching. The next step is to remove those next to the yellow ones. And here it is, the trash can we've been looking for. After the robbery, Matt decides to lock his lab door with a password. There are four buttons with different images, orange, banana, apple, and tomato. Can you guess which button opens the door? The odd one out is the tomato because all the others are fruits, so it should open the door. A priceless crystal disappeared from the local science museum. The thief left no trace behind. After analyzing the museum's security cameras, Matt invites three suspects for an interrogation. The security guard says, I only left my post once during lunchtime. I can swear that the crystal was still there when I came back. The museum curator says, I spent the day guiding a tour of foreign scientists. They came to see the crystal at the beginning of the tour. It was still shining bright in its place. One of the visitors says, I only popped in for a quick visit. I didn't even pass through the room where the crystal was kept. After hearing their stories, Matt knows for sure who the thief is. What about you?
It was the visitor. He hid the crystal in his sleeve. Matt's brother, Greg, arrives at his house to eat together. He yells, Matt, the microwave is on, and it's already defrosting our dinner. Greg hears Matt's reply from the bathroom. Could you please check the microwave and let me know how much time is left? Greg grabs his phone and calls the police. He reports a dangerous situation involving his brother. How did he know? Greg is blind, so his brother would have asked him to look at the microwave because Matt knows that Greg can't see. This made Greg suspicious, and that's why he called the police. The next day, Matt wakes up in a secret abandoned lab. He wanders around and finds three doors leading to freedom. But each door is hiding an unpleasant surprise. Here's a creepy monster sitting in a cage behind the first door. It's very hungry and angry. There's a bunch of venomous snakes crawling behind the second door, and the lights are off, so Matt won't be able to see them. And behind the door, there's a huge fire. Which way is more or less safe? He should choose the first door. The monster is in a cage, so Matt can just pass by and escape. Matt manages to escape and enters the nearest gas station. Uh -oh. He spots three odd things about this place right away. Can you see them too? The poster with the engine oil advertisement offers a 0% discount. The cashier has an octopus tentacle instead of hands. See this package of chips? It says they have the flavor of spiders. That's weird. The cashier agrees to help Matt get home if he manages to solve his riddle. I came first on Earth, but second in heaven. I also come twice a week, but I'm found just once a year. I stay away for months, but you can find me in February. What am I? The correct answer is the letter E. Matt returns home uh -oh. and finds out that someone has left homemade cookies on the kitchen table. He examines all the doors and windows. He finds no signs of a break-in. Matt decides to question three suspects who have a key. His mother says, I spent all day with my yoga teacher and my class ended 10 minutes ago, so I didn't have time for cookies. The plumber says, I fixed the kitchen sink in the morning and left for home. Why would I bring you any gifts? And Matt's girlfriend, Erica, says, I visited your house a couple of hours ago to drop off some shopping bags and left for the gym. I didn't see any cookies. Who's lying? The plumber. Take a closer look at the kitchen sink. It has no tap. Therefore, he lied. Matt is walking in the local restaurant and gets lost in a maze. He has only 15 seconds to get out before it starts raining. Can you help him find the right direction? Ready to see the answer? Here's the correct route. The king of one country was holding a feast where he invited all his friends. Guests gathered in the great hall. But before the celebration began, one of the courtiers informed the king that all the drinks were poisoned. The king said nothing and offered everyone to raise a toast to the new millennium. All the guests got up and raised their glasses. That's when the king noticed the villain who had been trying to poison him and other guests. Who is it? The guy over there is holding an empty glass. He knows the drinks are poison, so he hasn't poured anything in his glass. Once, on a cold winter night, someone stole jewelry from a famous singer's house. The thief didn't manage to run far away because a police car was passing by. 
the burglar hid the bag with the jewelry in the snow and disappeared into the crowd. Detective Anderson managed to catch two suspects. Look at them and try to guess who robbed the singer. If you dig snow with your bare hands, they will turn red. This man has red fingers and palms. But that woman could dig snow wearing a pair of gloves, so she could be the thief too. But she wouldn't be able to run in such high heels. A university professor enters a lecture hall, where his colleague, an elderly teacher, is giving a lecture on quantum physics. He's drawing formulas on the board, and his students are using their laptops to take notes. The professor knows that one of these students is sleeping. He starts walking around the room, stopping behind each of them in turn. Who is dreaming right now? Almost all the students are writing the formulas down on their laptops. Except for that one. His screen is off. That's because he's fallen asleep. Detective Anderson is chasing a robber dressed in a tuxedo. Suddenly, the criminal runs inside a huge hall. All people there are formally dressed. Help Detective Anderson find the suspect among them. Catch that guy. He's sweating because he's been running. Leo's boss yelled at the guy because he hadn't completed his weekly work plan. Now, Leo has to spend his entire weekend in the office, finishing his work. The boss took Leo's magnetic card so that he couldn't leave the building. Several hours had passed. Leo feels hungry. There's no water or food in the office, but there's a fridge and cooler in the next room, behind the door with a magnetic lock. On Monday, Leo gives his boss the completed report. Somehow, the guy managed to get food and water. How did he do it? Leo just went to the refrigerator and got himself some food. No one said the door with the magnetic lock had been locked. Mike wakes up in the back seat of a racing car. The engine is roaring, the wind is blowing in Mike's face. There's no one at the wheel, and a cliff is straight ahead. Michael's hands are tied. He jumps out of the car without hesitation and lands on the asphalt. Surprisingly, he doesn't get a single scratch. How is this possible? The car isn't moving, just its engine is running. Victoria approaches her house. The light bulb turns on automatically and lights her way to the door. Victoria inserts the key and goes inside. A couple of hours later, the doorbell rings. She looks through the peephole and sees a silhouette of a man wearing a hat. Victoria is afraid to open the door, but not because it's a stranger, but because it's not a human. Why does she think that? The light sensor didn't work, so there's no physical body outside. There's a huge airplane hangar on the edge of the desert. Pilot Tyler steps inside and notices a cat sleeping near the ceiling on one of the beams. Tyler decides to save it. There are no stairs and nothing else that can be used to get there. The only thing Tyler sees is a large puddle of water on the floor. So how did the cat get there? There was a pyramid of ice cubes. The cat climbed to the top of it and reached the ceiling. Then the ice melted and left the puddle. Margaret, Rachel, and Diana are walking down the street, sharing their plans for the weekend. The girls look rich, but only one of them has a lot of money. Who is it? It's Margaret. You can notice the key to a Ferrari in her bag. While leaving her house, Sandy takes her sunglasses out of her bag and accidentally breaks them. Now, she needs to buy new ones. Sandy calls a taxi and arrives at the street with fashionable boutiques. 
the best glasses in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best glasses in the world is written on the second boutique. The inscription on the third store is the coolest. Sandy heads there. What is written on the third store? The best glasses in this street. Johnny is going through his bills. $50 for electricity, $39 for water, $70 for a bag, $448 for a new phone, $52 for dinner at a restaurant, $589 for a computer, $637 for a room in an expensive hotel. He has received a $978 bonus at work, but he also needs to buy a new fridge for his mom, and it costs $798. John has to leave soon, but he wants to know how much money he'll need. How can he calculate it quickly? He should use the calculator app on his phone. The simplest answer is often the right one. Detective Anderson investigates the case of missing purebred puppies. He has a list of three suspects. He visits each of them. The first suspect is a young girl. She says she spent the previous day with her friends. And she's also allergic to dogs. The second suspect is an elderly man. He says he hasn't left the house for the last few days. The third one is a famous video blogger. She says she was making YouTube videos all day. Which of them is lying? The first girl. She says she's allergic to dogs, but there's a bowl and some dog food in her kitchen. Peter works as a top manager at a huge insurance company. Today, his boss ordered him to fire three employees. Peter doesn't want to get rid of someone just like that, so he comes up with a test. He invites all three candidates for dismissal and asks them to write down why they should stay in the company. The first employee writes that he's helped the company earn $100,000. The second guy reports that he's found 10 new clients, increasing the company's profit by $200,000. Using some illegal schemes, the third employee has earned $300,000 over the past quarter. Who should Peter fire and who should he keep? Actually, he got the order to fire three people, remember? The test was pointless. A train finally leaves the station. The conductor starts checking the tickets. Two passengers, Mickey and Anya, hand him two tickets for the same seat. There must be something wrong here, because only one passenger can buy a ticket for a particular seat. The first ticket belongs to Mickey Jones. The seat is 7B. Anya Roy is written on the second ticket. The seat is 7B. Who should sit in this place? Plane ticket, Mickey Jones' document says, and this is the train. The place belongs to Anya. Joe goes to the gym every day. He lifts heavy weights and works with the biggest barbells. He has achieved great results. One day, a skinny guy comes to the gym. He has never done sports in his life. He approaches the heaviest dumbbells and lifts them easily. Joe can't believe his eyes. He's been working for 10 years to begin lifting such weights. How did the newbie manage it? It seems impossible. The new guy is actually a robot. There's a wire connecting him to a wall outlet over there, see? And at the far end of the hall, a man is holding some gadget. He must be controlling the robot. It's snowing. Richard is trying to walk fast, not to freeze. He's leading three sheep through a dense forest. Finally, they reach the river. There is a raft near the shore, but it can only transport one sheep and one person at a time. A wolf is sitting on the other side of the river. If Richard takes his sheep there one by one, the wolf will grab them. The man needs to be near his sheep at all times. But how can he do it? It's winter, and the river is frozen. 
Lewis returns home after sunbathing on a beach. He turns on the stove to make an omelet. Sometime later, while he's having breakfast, someone knocks on his door. Several men introduce themselves as maintenance workers. They tell Lewis about a gas leak in his apartment and ask him to evacuate immediately. Lewis slams the door in their faces and calls the police. He's sure these guys are thieves. Why would Lewis think that? He fried his eggs on the electric stove, not a gas one. Thieves wanted to lure him out of his apartment and steal his stuff. Six people got stuck on a desert island. They know a helicopter will arrive in a few hours, but they need to eat something now. They have a pot, a bottle of fresh water, and five potatoes. They cook them and are about to have dinner. But first, they need to divide five potatoes of different sizes and shapes among six people. And the food should be distributed equally. How can they do it? Easy. They should just prepare mashed potatoes. One famous film director loved it when people spoke about him, even if it was something negative. Once, he made a terrible movie. The man wanted people to hate it. Critics and viewers called his movie bad, unacceptable, ridiculous, and embarrassing every day. And the director enjoyed it. A couple of years later, in an interview, he asked a journalist, So, uh, what do you think about my latest movie? The journalist replied shortly, but his answer offended the director. What did the journalist say? I, uh, don't remember it. Three girls met in a cozy restaurant to discuss an upcoming party. Jessica ordered a lot of food. Sarah asked for cherry juice. Lucy took an apple out of her bag and started eating it. The waiter brought the juice and the ordered food and left. Sarah started sipping her drink from the glass, but Jessica didn't touch her meal at all. Someone's not human. But who? It's the waiter! Did you see that his hands were covered with scales and his pupils looked like those of a snake? A traveler is walking through a dense Amazon jungle. He's looking for a unique artifact that once belonged to an ancient tribe. If his mission is successful, he'll sell his find for millions of dollars. He comes out of the jungle into a wide clearing and sees two caves. They're both filled with traps, but only one of them contains the treasure. The traveler's sure he'll be able to deal with all the dangers, but only if he chooses the right cave. Which cave should he opt for? The right cave. See, the entrance is overgrown with cobwebs. This means that no one's been there for a very long time. All the other treasure hunters entered the left cave, and they never came back. Mark's friends invited him to a picnic. He arrived at the place, walked around the house, and saw a group of eight people. None of them was his friend. It was the wrong house. Before leaving, Mark noticed that three people in that group were androids. Can you spot them? That guy is pouring a drink from a gasoline container. Smoke is coming out of this elderly lady's head because of a short circuit. And this girl is charging her phone through a cable connected to her neck. After a shipwreck, Jack found himself on a desert island. He built a raft and equipped it with small sails that he took from the ruined ship. Jack couldn't sail far from the shore because there was no wind. A few days later, he noticed a ship. It was approaching the island but its wind-filled sails were facing the opposite direction. According to the laws of physics, it should be sailing away from the island. Besides, there was no wind. So how is it possible that the ship was getting closer to the shore? The ship was equipped with a motor. Richard is walking through the forest barefoot because some monkeys have stolen his shoes. He's cold and hungry. Fortunately, he spots a hut. Smoke is coming out of the chimney and light is shining through the windows. Three paths lead to the house, 
The first is covered with red hot coals. And there are loads of rusty nails on the second one. And the third path is littered with broken glass. Yikes. Which way should Richard choose? It's cold, so Richard can wait until the coals cool down. And while he's waiting, he can warm up next to them. Toby has been wandering through the desert for several hours. The sun's burning his neck. There's nothing but hot sand around. He's run out of all the water he had. Toby gets weaker and weaker, and finally, he falls down. At this moment, he sees two tiny ponds. Toby only has enough strength to get to one of them. Which of these ponds is a mirage, and which is real? The left pond is real. See the clouds above it? It rained there, and the rainwater formed the pond. At the edge of the forest, quite far from the village, there was an old house. Its owner found his TV broken in the morning. Someone had smashed the screen. The owner called everyone who had been in the house that night. A cook, a cleaning lady, and a lawyer. Who broke my TV? The man asked. I was cooking dinner. I didn't touch anything, the cook said. I was cleaning the basement, the cleaning lady answered. I was upstairs. I spent the whole night studying the documents, the lawyer replied. One of them is lying. Who is it? The lawyer. He said he was upstairs, but it's a one-story house. He couldn't be studying the documents on the roof all night. Tom has lost his car keys. He's searched every corner in every room, but hasn't found them. The guy goes to the farthest room, looks at the floor, and realizes the keys are hanging on the chandelier. How does Tom know that? The floor is reflective. An elderly philosophy teacher began an exam. His students were sitting in their seats, listening to him. Here's a task for you. Prove that everything that happens around me is real, and I'm not sleeping. Whoever writes the most convincing proof will get the highest points. The students had been writing for several hours, but almost no one got a good grade, except for one girl. She wrote an essay consisting of several words. What did she put on paper? You can't read this if you're asleep. By the way, you can use this tip while sleeping. It's almost impossible to read anything in a dream. Therefore, to find out whether you're asleep or not, look at your phone and try to read something. There was an old haunted house in town. Local people were afraid to go there. But one day, three girls and two boys decided to check that place out and record whatever was happening there. They approached the scary building, but one guy, Rob, refused to come in. He said he would wait for his friends outside. The rest of the group went into the house. Rob was nervous. After waiting for them for a few minutes, he was ready to call someone for help. But all four girls and one boy returned at this moment. Rob realized there were g -g -g ghosts in the house and ran away from there. How did he know that? Three girls and one boy were in the house, but five people came out. One girl was a spirit. Rob saw her and ran away. Michael is walking along the sidewalk, holding his hands behind his back. A car appears from around the corner behind him. At this moment, Michael is walking near a big puddle. The driver accelerates. He's going to splash the water all over Michael. But at the last moment, he suddenly slows down and drives around the puddle. Why didn't he drench Michael? Michael was carrying a brick behind his back. The driver was afraid that Michael would throw it at his car, so he didn't drive over the puddle. Alexandra is walking around an old castle. There are lots of portraits of kings and queens on the walls. The corridor is lit by candles. 
Alexandra goes down to the first floor, where several people are dancing. The girl feels as if she has somehow traveled to the previous century. But wait a minute, this is all fake. How did the girl understand that? A hidden camera is installed in the corner of the hall. Also, that dancing girl has a smartwatch on her wrist. See? It's morning. Bob leaves his house and goes to the beach. The sun is peeking over the horizon. The sea is calm. There's no wind. Bob sits down on the sand, closes his eyes, and begins to meditate. Several people come up to Bob and sit down next to him to meditate too. Bob opens his eyes, sees them, and realizes that something's wrong with these people. But what? Look at Bob, and now, at how these people are sitting. They aren't touching the sand. Their bodies are half an inch above the ground. 